Welcome to Ace MTG, and we have a fun one for you today. We have a turn four infinite combo kill that actually comes together very frequently, all sorts of synergy to make sure that happens. Before we jump into the deck, make sure you hit that like button. And if you happen to like this content, consider becoming a fellow nerd assassin. My goal is 3,000 subs in one year on YouTube, and I'm one month away from that one year anniversary, so that would help me out a ton. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So first of all, I had not heard of this deck, and on Saturday, I was doing my weekend kumite, which is a little turn I hold for all the viewers. I give a small little prize at the end for whoever wins. But I was doing some fun matches as we're waiting for a round to end, and one of my nerd assassins who's been in my Discord for a really long time, he played this. I thought, what is he playing? Just some type of basic reanimator. And I thought I was about to run him over. I was like, one more turn, it's over. And then he shoots me a good game. I was like, wait, for me or him? And then he popped off with the combo absolutely awesome. So I knew I had to go back, watch that video, and I had to kind of reconstruct it, and I built kind of my own version. So, I mean, I'm sure most of these cards are probably the same, but I did throw in a couple of trucks, which I'll talk about in a minute. So the whole goal of this deck is we're trying to throw our hulking metamorph and our Rakdos joins up into our graveyard. So we're gonna have Otherworldly Gaze, three cards to the graveyard plus a flashback ability. You have found in the third path. So now we could play out of our hand the Pickpocket Prankster, and so we can mill four immediately for free with it. The next turn we mill another four. Maybe we get one of these out of our hand. And then we have the Faithful Mending, because what happens if you actually draw Rakdos joins up? or the uh, Hulk over here. Okay, so we need to toss those into the graveyard. So we have four copies of that, plus the flashback ability. Plus, if you're gonna mill things, you have the flashback on this. So just all sorts of great synergy there. For early game, as far as just some tempo plays, we have some fading hopes and some get loss. Once again though, you could use that off the founding of the third path to make sure you play that for free. We also have the picklock prankster so we can actually get things like our removal spells back. We don't have any major board wipes. Well, no temporary lockdowns, so big fear for me is, are we gonna get run over by Mono Red, Boros Convoke, and those three turn kill decks? But if we get to turn four, hopefully we've blasted these in. What do we do now? We use the Awakening, return target, artifact, or non-aura enchantment. That's the key right there. So we're bringing back Rakdos joins up as a 1-1 one, one creature, which now, it does mean they can interrupt this combo. Okay, so this comes back in, they could fade and hope it, they could cut down it, they could go for the throat it. So all sorts of things that could kill this, and that's the reason why I have Atroxa. But let's first talk about the combo. So when this comes into play, we're then gonna be able to get a creature back. We're gonna get back our Metamorph, which we're gonna make a copy of this. Because it's legendary enchantment, we're gonna get that legend roll. And then that means we're gonna hit them for nine, it copies at 18, and then we get it back again, that's another 18, we get it back again, another 18, and if you wanna stop the combo, you sacrifice the original, that's a one one, it pings them for one more, but after all that, they're dead. Now, the reason I said I have a Trox is I want this in the graveyard as well. Number one reason, what if we can't find our Hulking Metamorph and we know we're going to die? Well, then we use the Rakdos joins up when we bring that in as a 1-1 and we target our Atroxa to come into play. So if they have that cut down, if they have that fading hope and they're gonna ruin our whole combo, at least we're getting some value out of this. Because now when Atroxa comes back, maybe we find the whole combo again, right? We uh, does it find, it finds enchantments too, I believe. Yes, okay, so we find the Rakdos joins up, we find a sorcery spell, so we get the awakening, so we could do this whole thing again. If we need to find the metamorph as far as a creature or an artifact, we have that. So the Atroxa being reanimated is gonna be able to find us all the little pieces. Also, maybe is gonna be the thing that keeps us alive the next turn. If they wanna swing in, at least we'll be able to gain seven life, that might keep us alive, and then hopefully Atroxa found us all the pieces we needed, so then we do this whole combo again, we do the Awakening, we get back Rakdos joins up, we get back our Metamorph, and we do that whole cycle for the combo. So that's the whole idea with the deck. I like a couple of Atroxa, I know you're not hard casting it, I know you're not hard casting Rakdos joins up, but I think that synergy there is gonna work pretty well. I mean, when he played against me, he did it fast. I think I was gonna kill him on turn four if he wasn't able to pop off with it, and he was able to put it together. And I, if you look at this, there's just so much early interaction as far as discarding your hand. I feel like by turn four, I've already probably put about half of my deck into my graveyard, so it's really easy to be able to put this together as long as you find the awakening. So I cannot wait to hop on the ladder and test this thing out. But make sure you stay to the very end of the video where I'm gonna give you my final thoughts and let you know what jiu-jitsu belt this deck deserves. So let's go ahead and jump on that high method ladder and see if we can get this combo off. 
All right, let's see if I can play this deck as well as my Nerd Assassin did against me. So we have this in the hand. We love we could get rid of it. I think Otherworldly Gaze is the way to go. I think this is a really good hand too to go against Kagari, right? They're gonna be a little slower. My biggest fears are obviously going to be Mono Red, Boros Convoke, and all those three turn kill decks running around. Okay, so they're gonna draw their card. So let's start trying to assemble this combo. It's two pieces in there. When you cast an instant sorcery spell, mana value. I think I just want to mill, right? I don't want to do that yet because if I, hmm, let me think. So land two, I play this. Yeah, I won't be able to actually exile target, insert sorcery card from your graveyard, copy it. You may cast it. So I won't actually have the ability to cast that yet. So because of that, let's just go right here probably flash that back and pass. Taking a little bit of time. So the one thing we really have to worry about though on Gagari is they do have graveyard hate. Okay. I'm fine with that. Let's go ahead and pop this out, see what we could do. No land, no. I mean, that's decent. Yeah, I might as well. It's going to give us more milling ability. All right, so we're going to play this. Mill four more cards. So now we can balance that next. Now mill four and the turn after that maybe get it. So we're able to go through a lot of our deck. All right. So one of those things, you just wanna make sure you don't mess up this combo, but the read ahead is gonna be able to give me my sorcery that I need back. We wanna end step, we wanna surveil three, toss more, three more things in, that's seven things potentially in. Oh, whoops, that was stupid of me, huh? Okay, I was not thinking there. Okay, so try, sitting here trying to pay attention and then I do something boneheaded like that. Sheldred, all right. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, instant sor sorcery, graveyard, graveyard. Let's just bounce it now. Try and save a little bit of health. To instant speed, so let's actually wait on that, right? All right, let's go ahead and pass. I mean, we're a third of the way through the deck. We're just looking for our sorcery now. Let's do this. See if we can get it. Oh, we got it. We got it. Game over. Whew. Okay. I mean, obviously scared us, right? We've been through 25 cards now. All right, we draw. We take our ping. Return target artifact, blah, blah, blah. With X counters. Sure. All right, so we bring this back. We then bring this back. Select the copy. You wish to keep. I wish to keep that. They trigger. We do this again. Okay, just make sure we're gonna do this right. We wish to keep.
And then how do I just end this little trio? All right, so this should trigger them all now. Eh, just for fun, right? And a land. <laughs> All right, we got there. Uh, interesting, only only a negative two? Oh wait, no, once they die, we still had more triggers on the stack there. All right, so had to play it a little safe, was getting a little worried. We obviously made a mistake, probably should have bounced the Glissa before it did damage, forced them to just to replay that. But still, so many ways to find this thing. And the biggest problem is going to be if we run into any type of graveyard hate. And then again, obviously, if we're going to go into anything that's super aggro. So on this one, if we win against aggro, we didn't find any of our temporary lockdowns. We found none of our sunfalls, right? All we had was a bounce spell. All right, so we're actually going into game three. So game one came together really well. Good opponent for us. Game two was an absolute nightmare for us. I think we have to mulligan this. Right, we don't have anything to discard a two in hand. <sighs> now nah, let's try it. So what happened was I was playing Azorius Control and on turn two, they put an unlicensed hearse. Like, I mean, unbelievable, right? Just our absolute worst nightmare. Okay, now we got Mono Red, which again, I said was gonna be a definite tough one. Yeah, let's go ahead and go right here. Ah, we need the land, but let's not go pain land. I think, mm. yeah, we'll toss that in as well. Let's go straight to milling the cards. Fading hope. Okay, what do we have? What do we have? All right, we have one kill spell. We're gonna be able to get a kill spell back. So we might as well do it. Oh, geez. Let's bounce that. Bottom it. Get our land, so that's three. That gives us an option two, but we have the kill spell if we need it. So let's go ahead and keep this kill spell up and ready. We're still quite a bit away, right? We have the wrong cards in the graveyard. It's a little bit of a reverse action. All right, so we got to kill this. We can't take any more damage. And to play with fire. Oh, geez. So if they have any hasty creature, we're just automatically dead next turn. Or a lightning strike for that matter. Okay. What's best? I mean, this is cheapest, so let's go here. Graveyard, graveyard, graveyard. Okay, we're gonna have to m mill four cards. All right, can we live one turn? If we can live one turn, we can get a Troxa down. We cannot. Well, if we drew a little better, we might have been able to get in that game. So Mono Red, I said, was going to be a bad matchup. And I also said Graveyard Hate. And game two, we lose on Graveyard Hate with a turn two unlicensed hearse. And game three, yeah, still fun. And game three to Mono Red. All right, we got top 200 here. Um, let's go ahead and try this out, right? We'll just need to be able to ditch this. All right, so I think we're decent. 
Land, yeah, let's, we gotta do better than land. Obviously we need a fourth land, so maybe you do keep there. Mono red again. Okay. Straight to number two. All right, good. We got we found a faithful mending, which is awesome. It gives us a way to ditch this. So now all we're looking for, actually. Okay, we could bounce that. We definitely want to do that. Right, over killing something. Exile target instant sorcerer speed. No, let's just bounce. Yeah, let's ditch it. Right, we know exactly what we're looking for. We need to mill again. Target player mills four cards. That was it, right? Okay, we got it. We have the, the Hulk. And we have Rakdos joins up. Oh no, we need a land. The land is what's gonna come back and haunt us. Okay, exile. We need this. We have the Fading Hope Elise to keep us alive and we needed the land. Discard two cards. We could discard you, you and you. We'll play this. All right, we pass. Can they do 13 damage to us with a Fading Hope? Two, three, four, five. We can prevent three just right there. That is interesting. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it now. You know they have pump spells, but that's guaranteeing a saving three life. Another fading hope. I mean, we're, we're gonna win the game anyway, so I think we're good. All right, pass. Right, you need you need the plus four plus three. You need antagonize times two. Monstrous rage, or maybe two monstrous rages in a play with fire. I guess that works also. Oh, this was silly of me. Oh no, I'm still at five. Okay. Boop boop boop. Oh no, you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna play with fire my creature. They have mana up. Well, I mean, we can't not do it. Oh, because of that though. Maybe because of this situation, we get a Troxa. No, we're trying. And now they're gonna play with Fire Us. Okay, it looks like we have it. And now we'll just take a Troxa. Oh my gosh, they didn't do it in the right sequence then. They could have done it right off the bat and we would have been in trouble. All right, so let's take a Fading Hope. Wow. So if they timed it right, immediately once I targeted my creature, they should have killed it. And because of that, we should have just taken a Troxa right away. We ended up getting the win, but we definitely did not play that one right. So when you see they have mana available and you're afraid of a kill spell or a burn spell, right? I think the smart thing is to put a Troxa. And that's the whole reason I put a couple copies of these in my deck anyway, is for a situation just like that. And then I don't even do it. I get greedy. I want to do the crazy combo. All right. 
I'll keep this, right? We have some discard. We have some card draw, life gain, all things we like with this deck. And we have our turn for, for okay. Oh my gosh. We have it. We have a turn four here. Hello. We just have to watch out for that burn spell again. Code you feud break. Okay. Will we live that long though? We have to make them fear our no more lies and kill spells. So this is just the mono red prowess, I think. We're just pretending, right? We're just trying to make them think. <sighs> Would love to have a bounce spell right now. They're gonna, oh, and to play with fire, okay. Still, they get us to 10. So the question is gonna be, can they kill us on their next turn? If they can kill us, that's gonna be game over, right? They need to be able to do 12 damage to us. Mana efficiency, the play is right here. No, we have to do this though. What if we find a Fading Hope? I think Fading Hope is going to be perhaps our saving grace. So we don't go with the mana efficiency because we should have just the game one. Oh, that's just game. We just won it. Okay. Whew. So again, these mono red or mono red prowess. If we don't do this thing, eh, let's just see what we would have got, right? All right, so we're at four. Get our land, we play this. A zero. Get this back, do our combo, do the thing. Make a copy, keep it. We just have to make sure we do enough damage here. Right, it shows that's enough, but I just want to do it a couple times just to make sure. And this will be the last one. Keep you. Ooh. Yeah, we still have a lot more on there. All right, we're three and two right now. We know we can beat mid range, and we're actually doing decent now against aggro. I don't think this is a keeper. Let's mulligan that. We'll try this out. We'll pass out a pain land. So why I say this one looks good is right. We want this in the hand. We're looking to mill our other two parts. So first off, surveil land, potentially mill one of those parts into a double mill. Okay, so they'll go quick. Take a peek. It's a land. We have our four, so we don't need it. Right, just start thinning that deck out. Let's see if they do the thing right now. They blow this up and night. Okay. We'll take that. As much as much life as we could be saving right now. Hit us for one. Right. This is definitely looking like a game, though, where I don't think we'll have a turn five. We're going to have to do this thing quick. And that was the premium draw right there. Um, I think milling four is the better option. Destroying a creature is not going to do that much, so I'd rather bring this back. Okay, I mean, they're, they're out here. I'm assuming they're going to use through the three creatures to pump this up. Then they're gonna draw off of it. So we're getting a little lucky here against Boros Convoke that they're not doing, obviously, the turn three. They already have six creatures. They're swinging in. Now they're Imidane's Recruiter as well. Not that we're taking nothing. Okay. We're gonna mill four. Let's find it, let's find it, let's find it. Ah, we don't find it, not yet. Play the land. We want this now. I think we wait though.
Yeah, let's go ahead and pass. They're going to draw their card, but we still want to make them at least a little bit worried. Right? If they could do anything slightly slower. So we have this we're going to toss in the graveyard. We just need to find our artifact creature. Oh, wow. Interesting. I mean, if they have Imidane's Recruiter, we will be dead on their next turn. And I've said it all along, right? We need a turn four win on this. Good thing is they have no instant speed interaction, I would assume. So hitting us for eight. Should have done that now. We're not going to be able to do it. Okay, we're going to bounce you. Telling me good game. A blocker, is that better? Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, we're just dead. Dead no matter what. All right, GG's. They have the Imidane's Recruiter, plus you play the Warden, too much damage for us. It was one of those situations though, where right, if we found it, we had that win, right? We had this for turn four. Two, oh wait, two, four, six, eight. Shoot, they do have it. Yeah, we still just didn't even find it though. Half our deck, we couldn't find our artifact. So even on our next turn, we weren't necessarily gonna win anyway. And that was a slightly slower game for Boros and we still barely, I mean, we barely would have won on turn four, even though they were going slightly slower. So that's a really bad matchup too. So I'm sure there has to be some type of combination to do with a deck like this. Uh, we'll go ahead and keep this. Don't care about the Fading Hope, right? Like if we have a temporary, uh, do we just want the land? You know, I'm gonna keep the land. All right, we, we get our rematch, I suppose. Go right here. We're gonna mill four. We get nothing out of that. At least we get another uh, pickpocket. We have a fading hope in hand. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so he's gonna. Okay, that's nice. We got what we needed. We have one part of the combo assembled. Let's go right here. Let's mill again. Let's keep the dream alive. There it is. Combo assembled. We're an end step, okay. I mean, this one is just absolutely perfect. This is exactly what you're looking for. Imidane's Recruiter, just cause we can, bounce you back. I mean, yeah. Uh, Sure, we'll return you. Oh wait, sorry, decline. Did not mean to do that. All right, we got this though. Pay zero, confirm. We bring Rakdos. Copy. Keep. Yep, 
He's seen it before. He knows what's happening right there. I mean, that's about as pretty and perfect as you could do that one. So we are now one and one against Boros and two and one against Mono Red. Two matchups I thought were gonna be really bad and we're either 50-50 or slightly ahead right now. Very surprising. Now granted, we are 0 and one against Graveyard Hate. A turn two unlicensed hearse, that's just pretty much game over. Hmm. I think this is a keeper again. So a few reasons, right? You have the fading hope. So early game interaction. Ooh. Okay, this could be tough though. So you also have the founding of the third path. So we get a double spell basically. <gasps> They're doing the exact same thing. Oh boy. Maybe not. That That's a little different. Okay. So we want maximum mill power now. Two of those, don't need two. So founding the third path. One, we're gonna go ahead and go pickpocket. And the reason you choose this one is let's say we still end up drawing one of those things we need to discard. You wanna save the faithful mending in your hand to actually discard those. Oh, they wanna discard. Okay, I was like, why did they not attack first? Uh-oh, yep, there it is. There, okay. Target player mills four. Okay, we got it. We got it. We have the fading hope, so we can stop theirs. They're keeping up the fading hope as well. All right, we pass. We need them to attempt to tap out. Right, they have one part in. It's interesting to see their build compared to mine. Draw two cards, then discard. So we need a land. So the only good, even on turn four, I'm not gonna do it. We have two of these. They have the spell pier. Nice. Okay. See if they have the spell pierce again. We want to land. Okay, we're gonna keep that. We're gonna pass. The reason we want the land is we wanna try and fire this off. Shoot, they could have a spell pierce now. If they do have a spell pierce, that's game over. So if they have the awakening, look at, I mean, look how different theirs is. They have all the pieces though. They have the spell pierce mana up, they win the game. Okay, they have to now have the Fading Hope. Right, we go for it at least, pay zero. Ooh, we get there. The Fading Hope does it. The other thing we were gonna be able to potentially do, so let's just take a look at that really quick. We knew they were gonna have to Faithful Mending to get this back into their graveyard. So we knew on their next turn they wouldn't kill us. Otherwise, we would hold up the mana for the Get Lost. So when they try and do that combo again, we're again able to break up that situation. 
and then we were able to fire off our second one right there. So excellent turn of events. That If they had a spell pierce though, a secondary spell pierce, that's when they would have been able to finish us off. So we go up against another combo. It's interesting to see their parts, right? Things I didn't choose. So enters the battlefield, mill three cards. Maybe this is a slightly better one than some of the things I'm going with, just because it is a good chump blocker, right? You, you just you need extra things if you're going against Mono Red and the Boros. I don't know about the three damage, right? Again, you need early interaction, but I, I don't know about the rest of the synergy. Chart the course, I do like the draw two, discard, but I would rather have the faithful menning. I mean, I understand maybe four things that will make you discard something isn't enough if you really wanna put this combo together. So definitely some ones for me to start thinking about. And I would love to hear from you in chat, right? Which ones of these actually belong? What did I kind of do wrong with mine? What's gonna be the best version of this? And how annoyed with this deck are we gonna be? Speedy risotto. All right, uh, this one is not as pretty. Is this one of those decks, right? You just mulligan to find the better pieces. I'm going to say it is. We'll keep this. Uh, Troxa, yeah, you could go. Right, here's our saving grace, potentially. So we need to find a planes off the top. Let's just fire this off right away. Uh, that's a turn three planes. You graveyard... Yeah, I'm gonna say graveyard with that as well, but we need the land. So now we could go founding the third path, which gives us, oh, actually, no, we just use it to get the get loss, right? I think so. And then we could always get this back out of our graveyard later. Right into a monstrous rage. I, that's still not bad if that's all they're doing. I do think though with that, we are gonna use the get lost. We'll go ahead and take care of it, right? We don't want that extra damage, other pumps. What if they miss a third land drop right now? Okay, just a 2-2 two -two Felden coming at me. We'll live with that and the fading hope. We're gonna mill our four. Not great. All right, so we're still missing what we need. It's mill four. Got a Trox in there. Now we want to keep milling, right? Yeah, milling's still the most important thing for us. We'll go ahead and pass. This is one of those games, right? If we find it turn four, this was an easy victory. Godric, this is the most mana efficient play. Another Fading Hope. You know what, I think that is worth, oh wait, that's before we draw. Oh no, we do draw, okay. And then, what do we wanna copy? We need to draw some cards. All right, so we'll do this. At least there's a little bit of life gang. Keeps up a fading hope for us as well. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so we have that. We can always get an Atroxa back, which is not the... No, we can't. We don't have our enchantment. Okay, that's the thing that gets everything back in the first place. Okay, okay, okay. Discard two cards. Wow, this is tough. That's gonna be one of them. We need this. We need this, we need the land, and we need to mill four cards. And this is crazy. I'm actually getting rid of the Fading Hope. Fading Hope might have been the thing that actually just kept us alive. All right, we'll pass. I mean, this is kind of forcing us to find it off of this mill four. 
Well, at least next turn, right, we could at least put two blockers down. So we're gonna take five. We'll go to seven. And we have the potential to win right here. Um, I think this, right? <gasps> okay, okay, okay. Oh my gosh, that was so close. All right, so we have to play a blocker and we could go up to nine. All right, so we pass. Can we hold out here? Obviously the monstrous rage is what's gonna kill us. Ugh, not a squee. Okay. A squee and a monstrous rage just does it. <gasps> a check. Okay, we're gonna be okay. All right, we just pop this off. Discard you, discard you. Most damage is right there. Holy cow, we get there. Oops, pay one just for the extra. All right, get this back, auto pay. And we do the combo. Get this back. <laughs> when there's lots of creatures in there, it worries me that I'm about to make a mistake. And one more time for good measures. And we'll get the Atroxa back too, just to show we kind of got it all. Ooh, doggy. Right there, right there. And a land and a sorcery, submit four. Ooh, wow. Welcome back, and that went pretty well. Six and three with an infinite combo style deck in your top 1000 mythic, I like that. I really thought before I even played it, I was like, looking at all this, the otherworldly gazes with pickpocket, prankster, found the third path, faithful many. I was like, man, that is so much stuff to dump into that graveyard, and it was true. By turn four, a lot of times we were close to half of our deck in there, which just gives you such a great chance of being able to find this little three card combo, or at least get that Atroxa. Now, the whole reason I put the Atroxa in, I blew it on that one game. We still got the victory, but the whole point, point of that though was to get it back in a situation like that. They had the lightning strike. They could have ruined my combo. They just messed it up and they let me pop off with it. So that was very, very unfortunate. I think they were waiting for me to try and copy the Atroxa before they killed it. Or I'm, I'm really not sure. Maybe they had never seen the combo and the more you, they see this, obviously you're not gonna make a mistake. And that's one of the reasons we do videos like this, right? Now you've all seen it. I'm so happy my Nerd Assassin brought this to me and I was able to lose to this deck so I can now do better on the ladder when I play up against it, which also gave me that victory. You saw we got that mirror matchup and I was sitting there holding up my fading hope. I was taking my time with it, making sure I was able to stop their combo and then we actually were setting up to make sure we were able to do ours. So that one, really fun game. Overall six and three and I was surprised. We went three and one against Mono Red. I thought that was gonna be a really bad matchup, but we ended up getting the combo off fairly well. Boros Convoke, I was worried that was gonna be a bad matchup. One and one, not the greatest. For some reason, the stats right here, it's showing I was playing mono white for one and one, but that was the two games against the Boros Convoke. And then we won the game with the mirror. And then the other Azorius one, that's the one game I didn't show because they went first and then turn two, they played the unlicensed hearse. There's just absolutely nothing we could do right there. The game was just over at that point because we don't have a single thing that could deal with that. So no artifact, right? They would have to actually crew up their creature before we could bounce it. Then we would have to somehow get everything into the graveyard and pop off before they play it again and then get lost. Unfortunately, it does a creature. It does an enchantment, planeswalker, but it doesn't just kill an artifact. If it did kill an artifact, then maybe we could have done it. We could have put that thing in the graveyard without them being able to turn it into a creature and then we could actually do something, okay? I mean, granted, we could sit back, really hold everything in the hand, 
wait for that small moment where hopefully they do unlicensed hearse where we kill it. Problem was though, it was Azorius Control. They have a bunch of counter spells in their deck as well. So it's just a uphill battle. There's no way you're gonna win that one probably. So if you see unlicensed hearse, just realize this deck, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble, but it looks like the rest of the meta, at least for now, is good. Now this is one of those things, you get a deck in like this early, you're gonna surprise a lot of people. They're not gonna know what to do with it. They maybe have never seen it before. You'll get some wins. I think this will start to settle in about a month, six weeks. We always see it after a new set. There's some new cool style deck that just does some kind of crazy combo. It pops off, it gets a really high win rate, and then it'll fade off just because it doesn't have the legs. So once again, what's the thing to stop this? Graveyard hate or you need that interaction, right? You need something to be able to kill this when this comes into play so you can't actually make the copy. So this deck then at that point is gonna have to evolve. Now we're talking it's gonna have to have more counter spells. The version we went up against, it had a spell pierce. Is that enough though? Because a lot of times if I have to hold up that spell pierce, we were dead if we had to wait until turn five, turn six to actually be able to do this combo. This really was a turn four, we have to get this thing off because we're really doing no interaction with our opponent until that point. But overall, I love combo decks to play once, to play twice. The most important thing is know your enemy. This might be a deck you end up hating, but by getting to play with it or getting to watch it played a few times, you're going to be better suited to actually be able to beat it now. So I do hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're going to do better going up against this one. So until next time, never forget, you're an ace. Thank you so much to all my ace MVPs for really showing me consistent support and to all you nerd assassins out there who always are constantly liking these videos, giving me those watch hours and giving me comments. I appreciate all of you and I absolutely love this community that we've built. I hope we just keep growing from here. So once again, thank you to everybody out there.